All right, let's talk about Trey Lance. Trey Lance, uh, is he the current third string for the 49ers quarterback? I don't know. He got third string reps, so uh, that's certainly not ideal. Uh, although I don't know if that if that was because they you know actually consider him third string or what. But I thought he had a not perfect performance, but he showed a lot of nice things in this one, as I thought he has shown uh, throughout a large part of this, uh, you know, preseason, I think. Um, so let's talk about what he did well. And you know what? Let's just start off with what he did poorly. Let's talk about the interception, the worst snap of his game, certainly. The way it's set up is a pretty simple play. It's just supposed to be a, a halfback uh, screen. This is very simple. Usually, you can't really screw up on these types of plays. Usually they're pretty easy to convert, but watch what happens. Lance is going to take the snap right here. He looks over and I mean, there's a defensive lineman right in front of the halfback. I don't really know exactly. I'm assuming what Lance is thinking is that the defensive lineman just won't be able to see or adjust to the ball, and he's going to try to get uh, the ball over the defensive lineman. But the reality is you just can't make this throw right now. You have a little bit of time, not much. You know, you could try to lob it over the defensive lineman. That might be the better idea. But this is just a throw. You, you can't. You have to do something different here. Lance tries to just throw it straight through and it gets batted up and intercepted. I mean, that was just, I know that there's a bit of luck going on there, obviously, but also that's just, it's a bad decision by Trey Lance. It just was. It was a bad decision. Still is a young player and he made a young player mistake. So that was unfortunate, but I actually thought that he kind of from that play on really turned the corner and had a very good uh, end of the fourth quarter, I thought. A lot of it was just the simple stuff, which like, listen, I actually think that's really important for him to get the simple stuff down. You know, I mean, that's why most people are saying Brock Purdy should be the starter, right? Uh, is because, and I don't, I'm not sure if there's people who aren't saying Brock Purdy should be the starter, but, but it's because he's good at the simple stuff, right? That's what he can do well. This play, it's a man coverage play. You have a receiver who's just running a quick slant route, okay? Simple enough, right? When this play begins, you see that he's cut and he is open. I mean, the defensive back covering him is playing very far off. So if Lance can make this throw quickly, they can pick up a first down. Because again, third down and five, all right, important play. I know it's a meaningless game, but still, it's an important play. As you see, Lance does make that quick throw, and they're able to pick up the first down on that play. So definitely a good job by uh, Trey Lance to just get rid of the football quickly, right? Run the offense. Was this a hard throw to make? No, most plays aren't going to be hard plays to make. You have to find ways to do the simple stuff, and that's what he was able to do on that play. And going over here, the other aspect is he can do more than just the simple stuff. And sometimes it's, I mean, this is just a designed run with Trey Lance, which I do feel like, listen, if you're going to have Trey Lance play at some point, the way you get his value maximized is use his legs, run designed running plays with your quarterback. Now, again, if he ends up get playing because Brock Purdy gets injured, maybe you don't want to risk another injury. We know how 49ers uh, have bad luck with that stuff. But again, you're leaving value on the table if you don't take advantage of his running game. So the way this is supposed to work is, uh, you know, the uh, left, left tackle here for San Francisco is going to let the edge rusher kind of purposely get around the edge because then Trey Lance is going to run in between the left guard and left tackle. You also have a player who's currently, uh, you have a wide receiver who's going to move up to try and block a linebacker. That's how that's supposed to work. So right when this play begins, you know, the first part works. Lance is able to get through, but there's a couple of unblocked players in Lance's area that definitely could create some trouble. So this is where the, you know, the first value of Trey Lance is just that he was in that situation, right? Just the fact that a team would uh, be willing to have him run like that. There's already just inherent value in that, that, you know, uh, if Brock Purdy is out there, they're not running this play. So just the, the fact that there's another play in the playbook with Lance out there, there's some value there. But now you're at this point where now we need to see what more value he can bring. What can he do from this point forward? Well, as you see, he does a good job of accelerating nicely, and he ends up, you know, stepping out of bounds, but picking up the first down, which is, again, very good and very important to do on a play like this. So this is definite added value that Trey Lance can bring to the table. We also had something like this, which this was this was why you draft Trey Lance number three overall, right? This was the exact play of why the 49ers did that uh, a couple years ago now at this point, where watch what's going to happen. 
Lance takes the snap. He is going to look down the field. First, he looks towards a receiver who's about to run out towards the flat on that side of the field, uh, but he's not open. This is good defense. Okay, hey, good defense. Let's figure out something else. So Lance looks over to another receiver, but that's not open either. And kind of the second he does, you see him kind of moving down a little bit because there's pressure right in his face. So, okay, not an ideal situation to be in. No one's open and there's pressure. Again, this is the kind of thing where if you're doing the Brock Purdy versus Trey Lance debate, I don't know if Brock Purdy makes a play on this one. Brock Purdy might get sacked on this play, but you know there is added value with Trey Lance's playmaking ability. And again, Brock Purdy, uh, I think, should be the starter, but I'm just saying there are things that Lance is better at, and this is probably one of them. Watch how Lance is going to be able to evade that tackle. There's more pressure, but here's where the play really works for San Francisco. The defensive player who was covering the receiver that Lance initially looked towards now sees that Lance is getting towards the outside and can't allow Lance to run to pick up the first down. It's that age-old question of, do you leave the player open behind you and go try to tackle the quarterback, or do you make sure you cover your player, but then the quarterback can run and pick up yards that way, well, he decides to go make sure that he doesn't allow Lance beat him with his legs, and because of that, Lance beats him with his arm, is able to make the throw, and they pick up a first down on that play. These are the types of plays that you want to be able to see from Trey Lance, and these are the types of plays you do see from Trey Lance. This is Trey Lance at his best, and also this play was very good as it led them to, you know, have the, uh, Hey, I know that's just preseason, it doesn't matter, but they did end up coming back and winning the game despite being down uh, eight points in the final, you know, two and a half minutes. And this is the play that really helped them do it. Uh, kind of a simpler play, but it's man uh, zone coverage, excuse me. You have a receiver running a route that's supposed to get into a gap in coverage. Lance takes the snap. He's going to look in that direction, but does a good job of not looking immediately. Uh, he looked off a little bit before getting over there. Those little things are so important to not give away what you're doing in the Shanahan scheme, and now he has the player wide open. Lance is able to make this throw, and they pick up the touchdown right there, so it's, it's good stuff from Trey Lance. Like, I think it's fair to say Trey Lance has kind of gotten really unlucky here with San Francisco, right? I mean, the great great thing is he plays in a great organization that can help him, but obviously with all the injuries and because he had to sit behind uh, Jimmy Garoppolo that first year and stuff like that, uh, because of all that stuff, he just hasn't really been able to have a full year where he can prove himself. And he only had one year of that in college too. So he still is to me a complete unknown. And it's a bit unfortunate that, you know, uh, Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy, comes in and looked awesome uh, last year. And it's like, okay, you know, you have to play the better guy, I think, if you're San Francisco. But that doesn't necessarily mean that Trey Lance has played poorly. And I do think he showed some nice things in this preseason game. Again, one notable mistake. But as a whole, this was another positive performance from Trey Lance. And again, Given the 49ers injury bad luck that they've seemingly had, having a good backup is not the worst thing in the world. So ha having Trey Lance show some things uh, is certainly a bit optimistic. At least that's how I view it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on Trey Lance? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.